Hey, welcome to edX World and another video in the IGCSE accounting series. The entire syllabus of IGCSE accounting has already been covered. You can check all the videos in the playlist. Obviously, the videos that I have covered for the IGCSE syllabus are really short. It's not possible to cover all the points in the syllabus in those videos. So I'm trying to solve as many as possible examples on all the topics that are there in the syllabus. Through these examples, I'm trying to cover different points that can be tested in the exam. This video is going to be on cash book. If you've not already watched my video on books of prime entries and specifically on cash book, please watch them first in the playlist. I'll also provide the link of those videos in the description box below. Make sure you check those videos out first and then you can come back to this video. In this video, when I show you the question, make sure you pause the video, solve the question on your own and then go on further and check your answer. Check all the explanations for the transactions that I'm giving it to you. At the end of the video, you'll find two multiple choice questions. Solve them and the answers to those questions would be there in the description box below. So let's begin with this video and the question that I have for you is here. They have given the opening balances on 1st August 2020, cash 450, bank overdraft 9520, transactions are given for the month and then required is to prepare the trader's cash book. We'll prepare the three column cash book. We need to balance the cash book and bring down the balance on 1st September. And part B requires us to post the discount allowed amount for the month to the relevant account, which is the discount allowed account. So we let's see how we do that. Before starting our cash book, let's read all the transactions and decide whether the transactions would appear on the debit side of the cash book or the credit side of the cash book. The first transaction on August 9 is where a check that was received in the previous month in July is dishonored in this month. See, when the check was received in July, it was recorded on the debit side. The dishonor entry has to be recorded on the credit side of the cash book. The August 12 entry is a payment by check which will obviously appear on the credit side. Then August 18 received a check from Maria, debit side. So I hope you understand that all receipts whenever cash or check is received will appear on the debit side. Whenever there's a payment entry that will appear on the credit side. August 20 paid a check of 900 again. Again that will come on the credit side. August 25 cash received from a customer, debit side. Goods purchased for resale and payment was by check again on the credit side. Reimbursement to the petty cashier by cash. This is a payment from the cash book point of view. So credit side and paid all remaining cash into bank. Whenever cash is deposited into bank, that entry is a contra entry. And contra entries are recorded on both sides of the cash book. If you do not understand this, again, go watch the video on cash book. I've explained in detail there. Let's begin with our cash book. August 1, balances have to be brought down. Cash 450, that will be brought down on the debit side. Obviously, cash has a, has a debit balance. Cash is an asset. But here, bank is an overdraft. Overdraft is a liability that will, hence, balance will be brought down on the credit side of the cash book. So on the debit side, 2020, let me write on the date first, August 1. And details would obviously be balance brought down. Cash column 450. And the overdraft balance will be on the credit side, as I told you. Balance brought down again. The amount is 9520, 9520. August 9, a check is received in July, was received in the previous month, 362 from Wilson. It was dishonored by the bank in the current month. Whenever, the, whenever a check is dishonored, a reversed entry has to be passed in the cash book. Original entry of check received was on the debit side, so dishonored entry would be on the credit side. August 9. Details will be the name of the customer in bracket. For more information, we can mention the fact of dishonor and amount in the bank column 362. August 12 paid a check of 254 for the rent of trader's residence. Now, trader's residence, rent of trader's residence is a personal expense. So we cannot write payment of rent here. Personal expenses have to be put to the drawings account. So August 12 in the details column, drawings. Amount is 254 in the bank column. August 18 received a check from Maria to settle her debt of 520. The amount due was 520, but we allowed a 5% cash discount. Now, going to the debit side of cash book, August 18, details would be the name of the customer Maria. We've, up, up, we've allowed a 5% discount on the amount due. If you calculate 5% of 
520 you would get a discount allowed amount of 26 so the net amount received by check from Maria would be 520 minus 26 494 August 20 paid a check of 900 this the detail the bifurcation of this 900 is given this includes 470 for a new office furniture and the balance which is 430 for repairs of the office equipment the first part is a capital expenditure the second part is a revenue expenditure hence both have to be recorded separately so August 20 let's say office furniture 470 and the remaining amount was for repairs so again August 20 repairs 430 August 25 cash received from Prince a customer after allowing discount of 8% understand this transaction very carefully many many students make a mistake here see the transaction was something like what was mentioned on August 18, cash received from Prince to settle debt of 3450 3, after allowing 8% cash discount. Then the entry is simple, deduct 8% of 3450 and receive the net amount. But here, if you read the wordings carefully, it says that cash of 3450 has been received after allowing a cash discount. So the 3450 is the net amount received here. So let me go to the debit side. August 25, customer's name Prince. Now, discount allowed amount we will calculate soon. But for now, what I'll do is I'll write 3450 in the cash column. See, discount allowed cannot be calculated directly as 8% of 3450 because discount is always applied on the gross amount due, the total amount due. But 3450 is after deducting the discount. Hence, 8% cannot be applied directly on the 3450. So, how do we calculate the discount here? We need to apply some mathematical formula. If I tell you directly how to do it, what you need to do is 3450 divided by 92% because 8% is discount. So, 3452 is 92% of the whole amount. And when you do this calculation, you will get 3750. 3750 is the gross amount, 3450 is the net amount received. So obviously the difference between these two 300 would be the discount allowed. Alternatively, if you apply 8% on 3750, you would again get 300. Now, do you need to remember this formula? Yes, you can remember. If not, I'll give you a very logical way to calculate that amount. So let's assume that the original amount is 100. It's just an assumption. If the original amount is 100, the discount allowed will obviously be 8, 8% 8 of 100 and the net amount will obviously be 92. In this case, the net amount given is 3450 after the discount has been allowed. So you can take the gross amount as X, apply the cross multiplication and you would get the same amount. So X in this case would be 3450 divided by 92 multiplied by 100 and you would get 3750 and then you can calculate discount accordingly. If you do not want to use the mathematical calculation that way, you can directly remember that net amount divided by 100 minus the discount rate percentage. Okay, going ahead, August 27, goods were purchased with a list price of 1100. These goods were meant for resale, so obviously the amount would be transferred to the purchases account but the catch here is after allowing a trade discount of 20 percent i'll tell you what many students would do here what they would do is august 27 details would be purchases what they would do is 20 percent of 1100 they would write 220 in the discount received column and 880 is the net amount in the bank column but the question is is this the right thing to do? Is this the correct treatment of discount allowed? Answer is no. Why? Because trade discounts are not recorded in separate ledger accounts in books of accounts. They do not find a place in any of the ledger accounts and hence trade discount amounts are not recorded separately anywhere in the accounts. What you do is you record the net amount directly, the net value of the purchases in the purchases account. So the Show, the way we have showed discount of 220 in the discount received column is not correct and hence I will, what I'll do is I'll erase that 
to just show 880 as a net value of purchases. If there's a cash discount, yes, you can show it under discount received or discount allowed column. Keep this in mind. If you want to learn more about trade and cash discounts, the difference between them and how do you treat them differently, again, I'll provide the link in the description box below. August 30, reimbursed petty cashier by cash, 640. Obviously, the journal entry for this would be petty cash debit, cash credit. So on the credit side of the cash book, we can say details petty cash. Amount reimbursed is 640, so 640 in the cash column. August 31, paid all the remaining cash into bank except $200. This is a contra entry. Again, many students would make a mistake here. They would transfer 200 from cash to bank. Understand the transaction carefully. It's not transferring of 200. They want you to transfer everything except 200. So the next step is to find out how much is the balance left in the cash then only you'll be able to find out how much contra entry to do. So what you can do here is take a total on the debit side of the cash book first. If you take the total on the debit side of cash book, 450 plus 3450, you get is 3900. Then take a total on the credit side of cash book is 640. Deduct the amount, find the net debit balance left in the account. You would get 3260. 3,900 minus 640. Out of this 3,260, they want you to pay everything into bank except 200. So deduct the 200. So the contra entry that you would pass is 3,060. 3,260 minus 200. So let us pass a contra entry for 3,060 dollars. Entry would come both on the debit side and the credit side. So on the credit side first, in the details, there would be bank bracket. We will mention a C uh, showing that it is a contra entry in the cash column 3060. Similar entry on the debit side, but in details, there would be cash in bracket C showing a contra entry and amount in the bank column 3060. This is how you transfer cash from this is how you transfer cash to bank. Keep in mind, do not pass a contra entry for 200, but everything except 200. Once all these transactions are done, we can then balance our cash book. To balance a cash book, we need to take the total on both the sides and record the difference as balance carried down first. Let's do the cash column first. If I take the total of the cash column, 3,900, we've already taken. So on the other side again, 3,900, August 31, balance carried down, 3,900 minus the above two amounts, which is 640 and 3060. If you do it, you'll get 200 and which is obvious because we paid everything into bank except 200. So balance carry down in cash has to be 200. If you get anything else, it means you've made some mistake. You made some mistake in writing an amount wrong or some calculation mistake. Then for bank, we need to see which side is greater. Does this business, does the trader have a positive cash balance at the end or a overdraft balance? The debit side looks lower than the credit side, credit side looks higher. So let's take a total on the credit side. When we take a total on the credit side, we get 11,916. Let's copy the same total 11,916 on the other side. When we deduct the total of the debit, which is 494 plus 3,060 from 11,916, at the end of the month, we will get a balance carried down in the bank column of 8,362, which is also an overdraft. Apart from this, we also need to take the total of our discount columns at the end of the month. Remember, there is no balancing in a discount in the discount columns. We just need to take a total for the month and write it in the write it along with the totals for the cash and bank. So for the discount allowed column, we have 26 plus 300, which gives us 326. We just need to write the total for discount received. There was no discount received during the month, hence zero. There is no balancing for discount columns. Remember, do not write anything in with the balance carried down. Just take the totals and leave it. The question also wants us to bring down the balances in the next month. So balance of 200, which is here, will be brought down on the debit side in the next month. And balance of 8,362 will be brought down on the credit side in the next month. So September 1, balance brought down for cash on the debit side, 200. And September 1 again, balance brought down on the credit side for bank, 8362, which means bank 
has an overdraft balance again at the end of August or at the beginning of September. We've completed a part A. Let's go to part B and post the amount to the relevant column, post the amount of discount allowed to the relevant column. If you remember from my video on cash book, discounts are always posted in total at the end of the month. What do I mean by this? It means that you will not go and post individual amounts of discounts to the discount allowed column saying on the debit side August 18, August 25, no. At the end of the month, which is August 31, what we would do is we would take the total of the discount 326 and post it on the debit side of discount allowed account and that will complete our entry. So let us do this in the discount allowed account. On the debit side, 2020, August 31, always at the end of the month. If you put any other date, that would be counted as an incorrect answer. You might lose some marks. We can write total discount for the month. Some teachers might tell you to write total accounts receivable, debtors, everything is fine. That's all okay. The only point you need to remember is end of the month and in total always not individual amounts. So 326 on the debit side. I hope you understood all the concepts or all, all the points that are there in this question. If you have any doubt, you can always post your doubts in the comment section below. We'll be very happy to help you with them. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video. Please share the video with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Many more videos will be coming up on other topics also in the syllabus. See you soon with a new video next time.